What's up guys, Stephen from techmaker.tv. In this episode, we're gonna take a look at the adapter design pattern. So what we're gonna do is three things. We're gonna take a look at what exactly it is, when you should be using it, and then we're gonna look at a nice example in JavaScript that's gonna show you exactly how it works. So let's start by talking about what it is. So if you just go to Google and you type in adapter design pattern, you're gonna see a bunch of images that look like this. So if you're like me, this may not be the most clear thing the first time you see it. So let's go ahead and demonstrate a real example so it makes more sense. So in a nutshell, an adapter is something that we all understand. If you travel to Europe and you want to plug in your phone charger, you have to buy an adapter and plug it into the adapter because you have something that you want, which is power from the wall to come into your phone. And it's technically possible, but the, the API, if you will, doesn't match the actual literal interface doesn't connect and so the adapter is just there to make it connect so let's explain how this diagram does that so one way we can do that is to just actually substitute in what we're talking about so we could say for example phone and normally what you would do is just plug your phone straight into the wall so you would plug your phone straight into power but this is representing a situation where what you actually have over here is something like, uh, let's call it EU power. And so the EU, you can't plug your phone directly into the EU power source. So what you end up needing to do is have an adapter which presents an interface in which you can plug into. So what this, what this lets you do is substitute this entire setup up here. So effectively, and this is not how you represent this in UML, but effectively what you're doing is saying, okay, I can plug my phone into the adapter, which is gonna be okay um, to get to the EU power source. So this isn't valid from a UML standpoint, and maybe we'll talk about UML in another episode, but for now, I just wanted to highlight kind of the mechanics here. So the main use case of the adapter pattern is you have a a thing that works, right? So you have a phone, you can plug it into the wall, and suddenly you need to plug it into something else where you have the same concept, right? Like you have power, but the, the interface doesn't match. And so all you're doing is just transforming it so that the interfaces can connect. So what we're gonna work out in our example is just a kind of a fake dashboard, and it's gonna pull in just some weather. So we're gonna have you know the temperature in the city and so on and so forth. And there's gonna be another weather source where we get a requirement that says something like, hey, we wanna let the users use a different weather API. So we're just gonna call this other weather for now. And let's talk about now what makes sense and like what situations you should use an adapter in. Okay, so to that point, so imagine this is our requirement here. So we had this top box, so just dash and weather, this was working fine. And the boss comes around or the client or whoever um, says, hey, we wanna let users use this other weather source and we already have a class developed for it and we just want you to make it work. And you're like, okay, well we can see what we can do. Now, if you have to write this from scratch, you probably don't need an adapter. You can just write it so that the API automatically matches everything that you want because you're designing it. But what can happen and happens a lot, especially if you're dealing with legacy systems, is that this other weather is already developed and you don't want to change it because there's things that depend on it or that, you know, it depends on. So let me grab this and we'll just have stuff over here. So there's other stuff that depends on this. So it doesn't matter what it is, right? And we don't care. It just means that we can't change this. So that's the first scenario is you have other dependencies that, or other parts of the system that depend on this and therefore you can't change this. And that makes perfect sense, right? I mean, it's like, in our electricity example, it's not like you can say, hey, you know what, let's redesign all of the electrical outlets in the EU so that people who come here from America uh, don't have to buy an adapter. Like that makes no sense, right? So you have a legacy system, you have some other stuff depending on this, you're not going to change this, you're just going to build an adapter. It makes sense. 
So that leads into the second scenario, which is if the first scenario is that it's difficult to change this, the second scenario is that it's impossible to change this. So maybe you're dealing with some standard libraries. So a classic example of this is suppose that this is actually, um, it doesn't matter, let's just call this the client again. And this is something where you want to like uh, save data. So let's call this like local, let's just call this storage. And for now, let's say you're saving data in local storage. And so you're saving it, you have everything built, it's working great, and then somebody says, hey, let's save this in a database. So what you need to do is essentially build an adapter so that whatever your client is calling toward this storage, now you can just drop in the database and send messages to the database. So the two situations are if you have something that's hard to change because there are dependencies, the second situation is if you have something that's impossible to change because it's like a system uh, built-in library or something like that. So with that bit of explanation out of the way, let's jump into some code. All right, so I'm here and I've got my terminal and my code base pulled up. I've already written out a little bit of a small app here. And as you'll see over in the terminal, let me zoom in a bit so you can see the text just a little bit better. Uh, let me clear this. So if we run node dashboard.js, we'll get hello, the current temperature in Chicago is 44.44 degrees Fahrenheit. So that is the functionality that we have right now, and that's what we are going to want to uh, bring in our other weather source to be able to do. So let's talk through this code just a little bit. So we're requiring our two weather sources. We're not using both of them yet. We're just using the open weather map. We have a class dashboard here with a constructor that takes a weather source and just sets that weather source to be its own weather source. We have one method called display weather and it calls weather source .get weather, and then it expects to get back info and it expects info to have city and temperature. So and then at the bottom we're creating a new weather source with a single uh, variable Chicago and then we're passing that weather source into the new dashboard object and then calling display weather. So we have some uh, essentially specifications that are baked into this in terms of what we expect a weather source to have. We expect a weather source to have a method called getWeather. Um, we expect that weather source when we call getWeather to give us back an object which has a city and a temperature and we expect that temperature to be in Fahrenheit. So this is basically laying out what a weather source has to adhere to. So let's look at what our open weather map looks like here. So a couple of requirements. We're requiring a config file, which has my API keys and stuff in it, which is over here. Um, we're requiring node fetch, so that we can use fetch um, in a node environment. So then we have an open weather map class, which it takes a city as a constructor. Um, here in getWeather, which is the one method that's required, we're fetching a URL, then we're getting the JSON from the response, and then we're formatting the data, and then we're just catching any errors. So our URL here is the open weather URL. We pass the city in as a query. Um, the formatted info is the next thing that's being called, and that's down here. So it takes whatever data it gets back from the URL, and then it actually parses that data and returns back an object that has city and temperature. So uh, the city, we're getting just straight off of here. You can pull it out of the data that comes back from the API, but we already have it, so it doesn't really make any sense to do that. Um, and then we just, for now, are just doing a temperature, so we can get you can get all sorts of other data out of this API if you want to play with that. That's a cool thing to do. Um, but our only requirement is the temperature, and so we have to convert it to Fahrenheit. And in this case, this data gives us back Kelvin, so we have a to Fahrenheit method which converts from Kelvin back to Fahrenheit, and then we give that data back to the dashboard. And so you can see here this data, this dot formatted info data right here, is what's get, being given back to the dashboard. So you can see we have our city and our temperature. So now that we know how this works, let's take a look at our weather bit class to see what's different about it. So we still have the same requires at the top. We're defining a class weather bit. 
we have a constructor that takes in an object and it pulls the city off of that object instead of just getting the city passed in directly. Instead of get weather, we have get current. And instead of Fahrenheit, we're in Celsius here. And beyond that, we're also not passing back an object here. We're just passing back the temperature straight up. Um, so let's actually try to run this. Um, let's comment this out. And let's do this. Let's say um, new weather bit. Let's say const. Con I cannot type right now. Const wb equals weather bit. And then we're going to pass in an object which has a city of Chicago. And then what we're going to do is say um, wb.getCurrent. So the reason we're doing this is just to try it. So what I want to do over here is say um, node weatherbit.js. And let's see what happens here. Nothing. So I need to actually console dot log this console is not defined I really can't type right now can I okay try it again so it's giving us 6.7 which is accurate in Celsius alright so we just wanted to look at that to make sure this thing actually works um, as we expect but we're gonna go ahead and back all this out so we do know, in fact, this thing is calling the API and should be working. So now what we want to do is in our dashboard, what I would like to be able to do is instead of weather source here, I'd like to be able to say const weather source equals new uh, weather bit adapter and then just pass in Chicago. So this is obviously going to blow up if I run it because that does not exist. So let's go ahead and implement that so that we can get it working. So inside of adapter, we're going to create a new file and we're going to call this thing uh, weather bit adapter.js. And I'm going to actually just steal all my code here. And we'll clean it all up, but we're going to call this weather bit adapter going to copy this and paste it down here. I don't need an API URL. Um, what I need is a get weather method, which is going to return back. So what this is actually going to do is say uh, this.city equals city. Actually, no, I don't even care about that. Well, yeah, let's leave that for now. Um, so we'll say this.city is city. I'm going to change this to be city. So I don't want to actually run this query. What I want to happen is delegate that over to uh, my weather bit. So I'm going to say return weather bit dot get current. Probably. We're going to have to work this out a little bit more. So that means I need a weather bit. So I need to say this dot weather bit first of all then I'm going to say this dot weather bit equals new weather bit and instead of so we can't just pass the city in directly right so I need to say city city so now we are matching we're, we're modifying the data coming in to match what weather bit the weather bit class expects so I don't actually want to return this right now what I would like to do is say this dot get current dot then uh, let's call this um, Celsius temp so it's clear. So as you can tell, I'm kind of working this out as I go. That's what I do in all my videos. I think that it's probably helpful for some people learning, so that's what I try to do. I'm missing an arrow function there. Um, and also I probably do want to return this. So what I'm going to do now is I'm missing some like formatting. So I'm going to move all, I'm going to copy all of this into my adapter. Now you don't actually need these methods per se. Um, 
it's just that that was what I already had and I think it's gonna work fairly well so what I need to do here is change this to Celsius and then we're gonna have to write out the Celsius conversion here which I'm gonna have to look up um, in a second you know what? I actually think that it might just be um, Celsius times 9 over 5 plus 32 but I'm doing a double check Yeah, we'll double check that, but that may be right. Um, we'll try it without it anyway and just see if I guessed properly. But anyway, so um, what we're going to get back here is, so we have the Celsius temp. So when we call formatted data, formatted info, what we want to do is say return formatted info. And I'm just going to pass in Celsius temp. I don't actually need to, I don't have data to parse or anything. I just have a single Celsius temp. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to call that Celsius temp too, actually. And then what we're going to do is say this.city, and then this is to Fahrenheit Celsius temp. So let's double check ourselves here. So we're returning back city and temperature as an object, right? what's going on here um, and then here calling get current and then we're doing something with what it comes back let's try this I may have messed up something with the promises which seems likely but let's try it anyway so what does this mean we need to just run it with the dashboard so first of all I need to actually fix a couple of things so I need to bring in my adapter I'm gonna definitely need that over here I don't need any of this stuff, but I do need a weather bit and not the adapter version of it. That should avoid those errors, but let's go ahead and run this anyway and see what issue we get now. So weather bit adapter is not defined. Uh, that's strange. Weather bit adapter is not defined. Maybe I didn't just save it. Okay, so over here you can see it's hard to read in the way that my terminal is outputting this right now, but you can see this reference error formatted info is not defined. So we're calling return formatted info and we need to say this.formatted info. So let's clear this and run this again. Okay, so I had to add some logging over here to see what was going on. So I'm going to get rid of that and we'll run it one more time. Okay, so now let's comment out the one we're running and run the other one and let's see what happens here. Awesome, so what you can see is that we've created two essentially interchangeable objects and the adapter, if we look back over these things, so we have our open weather map just to refresh our memory. So it's got the get weather, um, it takes in a single uh, word for a city, um, it converts everything. It's got the format of info, which returns city and temperature. So our weather bit had the problem, which is just returning a single number in Celsius, which we can't change because potentially some other part of the system is, is getting that data and just wants a Celsius number. So we can't modify this. Um, this also has a handful of other functionality that we needed to add. So we needed to return back this formatted info. We could have added a lot of crap to this weather bit JS file, but then that file is going to get bloated. So that's why we use this class with this weather bit adapter. So essentially, we're taking in the single word city, queuing up the new weather bit, then we get the current Celsius temp back from that weather bit class, and then we just format the data and put it in the structure that we need, and we return back the city, and we have all of our data structure stuff here. So I think that's pretty cool, actually. Um, I hope you found this helpful. I'm thinking about for the next one, you know, I talked about part of the requirement might be that a user could choose which data source they want or something like that. So, you know, you could actually use like a factory uh, class or something like a factory pattern potentially to choose which one of your classes you're going to use. Um, but I don't know. We'll think about that later. Um, for now, I think that's a great stopping point. I hope this was useful and interesting for you. Um, if you like this video, definitely subscribe to the channel. Um, we're going to be putting out new content basically every day. So I will talk to you in the next episode.